Hi there once again and welcome to another Expresso Mechanic tutorial. And this is the third instalment in the Expresso Nuts and Bolts series of tutorials in which we're going to be looking at the colour temperature node. Now on the screen you can see that I've got an RSJ or a roll steel joist to give it its full name and you can see that it actually appears to be glowing hot. This has been achieved using the colour temperature node, that's what it's for. It literally transforms colour temperature into RGB colour, that's what it does. Um, so we're going to take a good look at that and what we can actually do with it. So without further ado, let's see if we can make this happen. The first thing we need to do is create the RSJ. So we'll get an, a profile and it's called an H shape, but actually it's more like an I, <laughs> but never mind. And in the parameter B here, I'm just going to change that to 80 just to make it a little bit slimmer. It's, I'll just do it in the uh, ZY plane. And I'll drop this into an extrude and we'll make it 600 so it's a little bigger. That's fine and we can just center everything up a little bit there. And then in our caps I'll give it a size of 2 for the bevel. And that'll be fine. I think that does does us perfectly well. So we've created our RSJ so we'll we'll simply call it an RSJ. And that's ready to go. And then the next thing we can do moving on from here, we'll get a null, rename it Espresso, give it an Espresso tag. So come down to programming tags, Espresso, and we're ready to start work. Right, let's just bring in the color temperature node. So it's in the general menu here, just here. So we'll bring that one in. And we can see that there's just a single input and output. It's one of those nodes that is what it is. You can't add to it, you can't take away. So the temperature, if we come down here, we can see that it says 4000 and this is 4000 degrees Kelvin. That's what we're talking about here. So we're converting Kelvin to color. And if we get the port information, we can see that it's a vector type because of course color is expressed as a vector in Cinema 4D RGB. So we'll just bring it down here and bring in an adapter. We'll come down to vector to reels and select one of those. And if we plumb the color into the input there and get three results, we can see what's going on. So we'll just copy those and then plumb the X, Y, and Z's outputs into them. So what we've got, we've got a one in the X, which is of course the red. So the red is full on because this is expressing color as a value between zero and one, which is, of course, what Cinema 4D does internally. Normally, though, we see the colors as between zero and 255 if we're working with RGB. And if we like, we can illustrate that and make that happen simply by getting math nodes. If we get three of these, we'll set the nodes up so that their functions are multiply and input two is 255 then we can just copy these so that we've got three of them there. So can command drag for copy, of course. Plumbing the X, Y and Z into the input ones of the multiply nodes. Copy all of the results. So command drag to copy those and plumb these in. And now we're getting our colors expressed in RGB. And the way it will work is 176.1 will become 176, it's rounded down, and 92.095, same thing. So it's rounded up or up, up or up or down, depending on whether you're above or below 0.5, as you'd expect. So that's fine. So we've got our RGB colors expressed there. So how are we going to go about using this color temperature? Well, if we bring in the RSJ, initially what we can do is plumb this in here and say basic properties, color. OK, and then to make it work, select the RSJ, basic tab, 
automatic and now you can see that it is working. So now our RSJ is currently at 4000 degrees Kelvin. That's the, that's what it would look like if it was heated to 4000 degrees Kelvin. It's not perfect, of course, because at the moment we're just using the basic color and we'll do something more interesting in a minute. So if we get hold of uh, color temperature again, and we change this value. If we said, say, 3500, we've taken it down to a little bit lower temperature now and, and that's what you need to do so if we go to a thousand you'll find that it's red now that's really as low as you can go with this node if you go lower if i say naught it's still red because you can see nothing has changed here the red is still full on but the two other colors are zeroed out now so red is 255 and the others are zero and that's all you can do it's strange it doesn't take it back to gray or anything like that which is a bit of a shame it's something that I wish it could do, but perhaps that's because different materials behave in different ways. Uh, for example, aluminium, if you heat that up, yes, it will it will glow white hot and, and it, it can be sort of red hot. But the trouble is, once it goes back to its um, cool state, it doesn't change colour. It just goes back to being sort of a silvery colour. Whereas if you heat something like mild steel, uh, you know, it, it will fade back to a sort of purple colour. It doesn't go back to the, the colour that it was before you heated it up. And that could be why this works the way it does. Um, and you're probably thinking, how do I know all that stuff? Well, in another life, I used to be a sheet metal worker and welder. And I taught TIG welding in a college for four years. So uh, I do know a thing or two about welding and heat. Um, <laughs> but anyway, that's another story and you don't need to know much about that. But yeah, um, so yeah, I mean, if you if you had say this was made of metal and you wanted to bring it back to its room temperature state, say, then you've got to do a little bit of work with another texture. Um, you can't just purely use the color temperature to control what's going on and make it work. It's just one of those things. I wish we could, but uh, unfortunately we can't. So if we put this back to 4000 for now, what we'll do is create a material and we'll, we'll set this up to do something more interesting. Uh, what I'll do first though, I'll bring in another null and I'll simply call this controller and I'm going to add some user data to this. So we'll add user data. We'll call the data temperature and it will be a float. We'll make it a real value. We'll do it in steps of 500 and will go between 1000 and 6000 as a maximum and max those out so that we, they can't go any further. The default value, we, well, we can leave that as we like really. 1000 is fine, we'll leave it as it is, that's okay. So that will be set up for us in our user data. So we've got our temperature, what I'll do actually, let's go back into there, manage user data, temperature. I'm just gonna change the interface to a float slider that will be better for us okay now we've got a float slider that's fine so we're ready to go and that's all set up so we should be fine to go yep that's doing what we need it to I'm going to drag my controller in select temperature as the output and then plumb it into the temperature input of the color temperature node and now when we select our controller, we can control the actual temperature in steps up to 6000. It's up to totally white hot. OK, so that's good. That's all working fine. Moving on from here, I will create a texture. So I'll double click in here, create a material, open it up and we'll see what we've got. The color is fine. That's all looking good. We'll also use, I think, glow, we'll switch that on. And we won't use material color because we'll use our temperature controller to control this color here. And we'll also use the same controller to control the radius here. So what we're going to do then is first of all, bring in our material. We'll add a color input which we can 
plumb into or plumb in from I should say here what I'll also do is just drop this material on the RSJ so that we can see what we're doing so we haven't really seen any change in the viewport but we now are using the material color as opposed to the color of the RSJ here we could in fact unplumb that but we can just leave it in for what it is so we've got our color on our material the next thing we need to do is select glow color we'll bring that in and we can place the output from the color temperature into there and then we'll also use the glow radius and with the glow radius we're going to be using the controller to control that but what we need to do first is bring in a range mapper so we'll come down to calculate range mapper bring one of those in everything up here can stay the same we just need to plumb in the temperature control into the input there and set up our upper and lower input and output values so the the input lower we can say is 1000 because we know we don't want to go below a thousand degrees Kelvin and upper 6000 our output lower will say 1 and our output upper 10 now these are going to be centimeters because the glow radius is, is measured in centimeters so it's got a maximum of 10 centimeters of glow and if we then plumb this in to there and we set up our interactive render region we'll find that it's all starting to work so that's looking good if I select my color temperature controller here and go to user data sorry I picked the wrong thing that's what I mean to do color temperature up there or the controller up there and now when we move the slider we find that we are controlling both the color of the texture and of course we've got more glow depending on how hot we choose to go okay so that's completely white hot it's probably a bit too much 6000 but uh, it's interesting so I mean if you if you think about the way this works I mean when material well when when metal let's say that we're working with with mild steel or iron um, when it when it, when we're at sort of 3500 you can see that it's glowing orange you, this is the sort of plastic state so if you were to get a hammer and hit this area here this material would bend if it was this hot because it's in its plastic state in fact if you go down to 3000 it's still just about in the plastic state there sort of three to four thousand Kelvin that's what you would call the plastic state of material but once you start to get to the level of sort of five and a half thousand Kelvin this effectively would be molten now this would be liquid at this stage so if you're doing scenes involving say I don't know you might be doing a scene inside of um, a steel processing plant or something this is where the color temperature would be very useful to you it'd be a useful friend to have if you were doing any scenes that involve anything like involving metals that are being heated uh, or made liquid I mean you might have a scene which you were using something like X particles to create uh, a fluid that was supposedly liquid metal well then this would be the ideal color temperature to, to, to actually have that set to so th this would be very very good for setting up the color of your of your material for your uh, for your liquid and again if you were doing a, a scene with welding and you wanted sparks flying everywhere well initially the sparks would need to be this color and then of course they'd fade down over time and pretty quickly you know until they were gray really so you could use the color temperature to, to get them down to sort of red hot and then after that you'd have to bring in another texture to get it to, to fade back to sort of a gray that gray metallic sort of color um, but you know it, it's a useful ally as I say when when it comes to sort of heating and, and demonstrating things that are hot this is a very useful ally to have uh, and if you set it up with range mapping and stuff by using this setup that I've got here I mean obviously what we've got over here is just for illustrative purposes you don't need any of this but the stuff that we've got here you don't even need that really so these four nodes are the ones that you really need these are the essential nodes to make this work but you could add a couple of other range mappers and then work with other parts of the material and you could um, if we just open that again with the glow channel here you might want to play around with the outer and inner strength and the brightness maybe you know so you could 
work with those just by putting some more range mappers in and deciding what you're going to do with them and how you're going to set them up and just use the temperature control here to run all four range mappers and then control all of those parameters within the texture you know that's going to be great you, you get a good result there um, but anyway I'm going to leave that up to you if you want to give that a go and have a play around with it then please do but uh, hopefully you can see that this is actually a useful ally now when it comes to sort of doing scenes that involve any kind of metallic surfaces that are getting hot it's, it's brilliant for that sort of stuff because it's so accurate. So uh, yeah, that's what the color temperature node is for. So I'm going to sort of wrap it up about now because this is only going to be a short tutorial. But uh, I hope, as always, that you've enjoyed this one and that it's been of use to you and that you've learned some stuff that might be worthwhile knowing. And if you have, then please give the video a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and leave a comment, ring the bell. And of course, wherever you happen to be on social media, then please, please share this video because all of this good stuff helps to keep the channel moving in the right direction. But anyway, for now, that just about brings the curtain down on this tutorial. So I'll see you very soon on the next one.